Mr. Speaker, Scotland's First Minister has set the date and started the campaign. Our nation will have its independence referendum on the 19th of October 2023. The reality is Scotland has already paid the price for not being independent. Westminster governments we did not vote for imposing policies we don't support. Breaking international law, dragging Scotland through a damaging Brexit we didn't vote for, and delivering deep austerity cuts. Contrast that with our European neighbours, who have greater income equality, lower poverty rates and higher productivity. Mr Speaker, why not Scotland? In the weeks and months ahead, we will make the positive case for independence. Will the opposition, if they can, make the case for continued Westminster rule? Can the Prime Minister? Thank my, can I thank the Honourable Gentleman. It's always good to see him in his place. Uh, I just, <laughs> no, no, genuinely, I, it's good to see him in his place. It's not the right time for another referendum, given the challenges that we face uh, as one United Kingdom. And I think, and he referred to some of the challenges in Scotland, uh, but I think actually the people of Scotland want their two governments to work together, and we are uh, keen, willing, enthusiastic to do so. Ian Blackford. There is no case for the union, as we've just heard from the Deputy Prime Minister, because, Mr Speaker, the harsh reality is that the Tories might fear democratic debate, but they don't have the right to block Scottish democracy. As the late Canon Kenyon Wright said, what if the other voice we all know so well responds by saying, we say no, we are the state? His answer, well, we say yes. And we are the people. Just last year, the member for Murray, the leader of the Scottish Conservatives, no less, put it in his own words. A vote for the Scottish National Party is another vote for an independence referendum. Well, you won't often hear me say this, but I agree with him. And so do the Scottish people. Scottish democracy will not be a prisoner of any Prime Minister in this place. So why is the UK Government scared of democracy? Or is it simply is it simply that they have run out of ideas to defend the failing Westminster system? Deputy Prime Minister. Yeah, thank you, Honourable Gentleman. I think he's rather airbrushing history with uh, that long soliloquy. But look, he re- mentioned the problems that Scotland faces: uh, huge tax burden imposed by the SNP, uh, the, the Scotland's record on science and maths. Uh, under the international PISA rankings, are now uh, uh, have dropped below England and Wales, and the SNP have presided over the worst drug death rate in Europe, the highest since records began. I think the people of Scotland expect uh, their government in Holyrood and in Westminster to work together to tackle the issues facing them in their day-to-day lives. That's what we're doing.